Hey friends at Gallery Church, uh, Patterson Park. This is Miss Julia. This is our second week for the Gallery Kids Corner. This week we're talking about someone in the Bible named Thomas. We talked a little bit about this on Sunday, so I'm going to review. Um, but Thomas was someone in the Bible, a friend of Jesus, who was one of the 12 disciples. There were 12 very close friends of Jesus that walked with him through his life and his ministry. And after Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared to many people, and including Thomas. Some people, when they saw Jesus was raised from the dead, they were scared. Some people were excited. Some people were happy and joyful. And Thomas was one person who was doubtful. That means he didn't really believe what was happening. Sometimes it's hard to believe uh, what other people tell us, but what we learned on Sunday is that an awesome thing about our God, one of many awesome things, is that God does not lie to us. He always tells us the truth. So we played a quick um, true or false game. I wanted to play again now in case you missed it. So on Sunday, I shared with us a couple amazing facts, unbelievable facts about animals. And our friends who were on the call, they voted with their thumbs up or their thumbs down. If I said a fact and they thought it was the truth, that I was telling something that's true, they gave me a thumbs up like they believed it. If the thing I'm saying doesn't sound like it's the truth, it's not, I'm telling maybe a lie, you would say, I don't believe it, and you're going to show me your thumbs down. So you can play along. I know I can't see you, but you can play along and show me your thumbs up or thumbs down as I read different things. So the first fact I shared on Sunday was true or false. Is it true that horses can sleep standing up? Is that true or false? And the amazing answer was yes. Horses can sleep standing up. They sleep their, their long sleep at nighttime. They sleep on the ground. But funny enough, animals or horses can sleep standing up during the day. The second amazing fact is tigers about tigers. True or false? Tigers, when they roar, their roar can be heard two miles away. So that is if you were in the middle of the city in Baltimore and another friend was at the church. If a lion was in the middle and you were at the church, you would be able to hear that lion's roar. Is that true? Two miles away, it sounds pretty far. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It's actually thumbs up. A lion's roar can be heard two miles away. It's crazy. The third thing I shared was true or false. An octopus has three hearts. True or false? What do you think? This is a third amazing true fact. The answer is true. Yes, an octopus has three hearts because it has eight tentacles and a really big body. And the heart has to pump blood to all those big parts of its body. So that's true. And the point of this game, again, was to share these unbelievable things, things that are kind of hard to believe. They're actually true. And that was the feeling Thomas had. But I'll give you two more um, bonus questions. So true or false, an alligator can swim 20 miles an hour. When you're driving through the city with your parents in the car, that's about how fast they drive. When they're stopping at stop signs and going a little slower in the city than on the highway, that's, that's about 20 miles an hour. True or false? That's true. An alligator can swim in the water 20 miles per hour. And then what was the last one? The bonus one, another one is hippos. This was crazy to me. A hippo can, it's true, I'm gonna give you a spoiler because all of these are true. A hippo can hold its breath for three minutes underwater. I can probably only hold my breath for about 20 seconds underwater and so can you. But hippos can hold their breath for three minutes. It sounds like a fish more than a mammal, a big animal, but they can. So those were, uh, our three plus two for our five amazing facts. And I just wanted to do that so that you could have a feeling of, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's true. That's how Thomas felt when Jesus was raised and he saw him walking around and when he was greeted by Jesus. So we read part of this book together on Sunday. I read the very end, but at this time I'm going to read the whole thing to you so that we can learn more about our friend Thomas from the Bible and hear the whole story. So this is Doubting Thomas, and it was written by Yvonne Patterson and illustrated by Gordon Willman. Jesus chose four fishermen to come and follow him. He also picked a tax collector. Then he chose again. I choose you, he called to Thomas. 
Will you come with me? Oh, yes, I will, cried Thomas so very happily. We have a lot of work to do, spoke their good, kind master. So leave your homes and all your things, and we can work much faster. Thomas joined the others. They were twelve and all. Simon, Andrew, James, and John from the sea had answered Jesus' call. He also chose Philip and Bartholomew, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, then Thaddeus and Matthew. There was another Simon and another James, too. Jesus sent them all out to the lost sheep of Israel, two by two. They healed the sick and helped the poor and preached the word of God. They cast out devils from many men as town to town they trod. Thomas worked so eagerly along with the rest. Because of all the deeds he did, many lives were blessed. I'm going to switch sides so you can see the picture a little brighter. Thomas and the other men often stayed with the Savior. They wanted to learn more of God and to follow his behavior. As they were with the Savior one day, he said, We must go to Bethany, for Lazarus, our dear friend, is dead. The apostles stopped their work and they sighed. They were so sad to hear that Lazarus had died. But Jesus said, Let us all go to Mary and Martha. And there I'll show the wonderful things that God can do. For I want you all to believe in him too. When they came near Lazarus' house, Martha ran outside. If you had been here, Master, our brother would not have died. But I know that whatever you ask of God, that he will do for you. Will you help us, dear Jesus? Martha begged. Will you? When Jesus saw everyone weeping, he began to cry himself. He prayed to God outside the grave and restored Lazarus to perfect health. Many Jews believed in Jesus that day, but some told the mean Pharisees. Later, Jesus was condemned before Pilate because of their wicked pleas. Then Jesus died on the cross and was buried in a tomb. But in three days, he rose again. That was our very first Easter. Jesus appeared first to Mary Magdalene in a garden near the tomb. Later, he appeared to the apostles as they were gathered in a room. But Thomas was not with them when they saw Jesus that day. He wasn't where he should have been. Was he at work? Or was he at play? The disciples ran to find Thomas to tell him the good news. We've seen Jesus. He's alive. I won't believe it, said Thomas. I refuse. I will not believe unless I see Jesus standing here. If I can feel the nail prints in his hands, and if I can put my hand upon his side, then I will know you have not lied. Thomas seemed to have forgotten so many things that Jesus had done. Then he thought, if Jesus raised Lazarus, surely God can raise his only son. Although Thomas still doubted, he ran to find the other men. They talked and they prayed till eight days later. When? Jesus appeared to them in the room. Although the door was tightly shut, and he walked right up to Thomas saying, Thomas, you may put your hand upon my side and you can touch. You can put your hand upon my hand and you can touch my side and be not faithless, but believing for it was you that I died. Thomas was ashamed because of all his doubt. My Lord and my God, I believe Thomas cried out. Thomas and or Jesus answered Thomas, you believe because you've seen me here, but blessed are those who've never seen yet believe. To me, they are especially dear. So this was like one of the amazing facts that I had shared. 
But Thomas, he really wanted to be able to see Jesus and to, to know the truth by, by proof. He wanted to see it for himself and not just think about it and believe it. There were many other disciples and friends of Jesus who believed what happened only with uh, hearing it because someone said it with their words. But Thomas wanted to see it and hear it and feel it. Sometimes we can be like that when um, we're reading different things in the Bible or um, different things happen in our life that make it hard to trust Jesus. Um, we sometimes want to see and touch and feel him. But the amazing thing we can always remember is that we, because Jesus died for us, now we can have relationship with God. And now we can ask God questions. We can ask God questions like Thomas had. Like, are you really here? Do you really exist? Did you really, um, were you really raised from the dead? And so that gift we have, that relationship, it happens through prayer, by talking to God. Prayer is when we just have a conversation with God. So I wanted to do a little activity um, that just allows us to see how prayer works and um, to remind us that we should be talking to God to ask our questions and to get to know him more. Friends, what you'll need for this activity are two cups and a piece of string. Also, you may need a pencil or something just a little bit pointy so that you can poke holes in the bottom of the cups. I have plastic cups, but paper cups work even better. Whatever you have. Not a cup that you put in the dishwasher, but a cup that you can recycle or put in the trash are good for, is good for this activity. So the point of this, friends, is to make a telephone. And it's not a smartphone or something with a touch screen, but it is actually just with these different objects, you can create a connection between this cup and this cup so that you can listen in one and talk in the other. So I'm just gonna show you how to create this. I have my cup and I already um, strung my, put my string through the bottom. So you see I have a hole here. I poked a hole and then I put my string through and I tied a knot so that it's not coming out. When I'm pulling on this string, it's not coming out. So the other end of this string, I'm going to put in the bottom of my other cup. I already made a hole. I could just do it with a pen or a pencil. If you really need to use scissors, just use it uh, with an adult in your house so you don't hurt yourself. So I have an, a second hole and I'm gonna put my string through it. Sometimes you have to lick it so that it stays together. And now it's going from the bottom all the way out. And I'm gonna tie a knot. This is a very important thing to be able to do. So I'm gonna show it you on the camera. I'm gonna tie a knot, which means I'm going to put the end of my string crisscrossed over the longer part. I'm gonna put that end in the circle I created. So let me show you again. I have my end and I'm crossing it over the string and I'm putting that end in the circle. You're going to get to see me do it a couple times because I think that you have to do it a lot so that it creates a bigger knot. One tiny knot, it's probably going to pull through. So I did two, I'm going to do three just to make it a little bit bigger. See how they're all touching? Now I have one big knot. Great. And the way this works again is one person one sibling or a parent, anybody who's in your house, one person can be listening and you got to keep the string tight. And the person on the other end can be talking or listening, right? So you can make it a really long string. You could shut the door um, and, and talk on other ends, but it works best when nothing is touching the string. So it has to be tight and one person on this end, one person on this end, and you'll be able to talk to each other. So this is just a reminder that even if we're not right next to God and we can't touch him and see him, he's hearing us when we're talking to him, when we're talking to him. He's hearing us all the time. So we're able to ask him our doubts and our questions. We're able to sh share with him what we're excited about, about our day, about our family, about our wishes and prayers. So that's just an activity to remind you about what prayer is and um, the example that Thomas set for us. Thomas shared his questions and talked with Jesus and was really honest about what he was thinking about. So you can do that at home with your family. 
Our last activity for our pre-K friends is the wonder questions. I have just two questions here today and I'm going to read them and I ask that you would talk about these with your family, the people who live with you in your house. You can be thinking about these all week because they're kind of tricky questions. And they'll help us to grow more in our what we think about God. So the first question I'm pulling out in the wonder box is, why didn't Thomas believe? Why do you think? You should ask your sibling or your parent, what do they think? You can talk about your answers. And the second question I pulled out of the wonder box is, are there things in the Bible that are hard for you to believe? So think about all that you know and you've learned at church, things you've heard other Christians tell you, maybe things your parents have shared. Is there anything that's hard for you to believe? What are those things? You should talk about those this week with your family. This next part is for our elementary friends. I have the Adventure Bible. I grabbed from our classroom in the church, and I want to read the passage that we're talking about that includes Thomas. So if you want to go ahead and get your Bible, you can follow along, or if it helps you, you can pause the video and read it on your own and then listen to me to read it too. Sometimes it's good to hear it twice, whatever helps you. But I'm going to go ahead and read John, in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 29. That's almost the whole chapter. Early on in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. So we have a couple of reactions. Jesus has risen from the dead, and the women who went to go visit Jesus in the tomb and kind of pay their respects, like you'd go to a graveyard and visit a loved one. The women, including Mary Magdalene, they were excited. They were so excited that they told other people. A different reaction is Simon, Peter, and James. They ran to the tomb and they were very surprised. It says that they didn't remember the things Jesus had told them before. Jesus had given them lots of hints when they were together and doing ministry. They'd given, Jesus had given them lots of hints that he was going to die and be raised again. But here they are at the tomb and they're shocked. They're really surprised. So the next part starts in verse 11. And my heading is Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus's body had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They had taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they had put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So here is a new reaction. Mary is sad. 
because she also didn't realize that Jesus had risen. She thought someone took his body like it was stolen. She thought someone had gone into the tomb and taken it away and they weren't going to tell her where it was. So she's crying and someone new enters. And at first she didn't recognize Jesus. I wonder why, why do you think, why do you think she didn't recognize him? They said that uh, she thought he was the gardener, the person tending the garden around the tomb, because there were probably lots of flower beds and citrus and beautiful things that needed to be tended by a gardener. So she just thought he worked there. Isn't that funny? Which means that when he, Jesus rose again, he looked very different. He had a new kind of fresh body. He probably looked like he was really clean and wearing new clothes. And this woman who was so close with Jesus for so long, she didn't even recognize her friend. So that's a different reaction than Thomas. She was sad. So far we've had excited and shocked or surprised and now sad. So let's keep reading. Uh, the next heading for me is Jesus appears to his disciples. And this is verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Lord has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, you are not forgiven. So the disciples were, were together and they were, they also had locked the door in the room that they were in because they were afraid. They were afraid of different Jewish leaders and people had a lot of different reactions when Jesus died and was buried. And so they were kind of hiding and maybe talking a lot and trying to figure out what do we do now? What do we do next? But then suddenly, almost like a little bit like magic, like Jesus didn't open the door. He just appeared out of thin air. And he really scared the disciples, which is why Jesus had to say peace right away. He said, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. That's a similar greeting to a lot of angels. When a lot of angels would greet people, they would first say peace because their presence was kind of awesome and scary and uh, surprising. And that was Jesus's presence right now. So this is a new reaction of, of a little bit of fear and surprise, um, so much so that Jesus had to say peace. So my next heading in this final section starts at verse 24. It says, Jesus appears to Thomas. So that's our main character that we talked about in here. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So that whole story we just read, Jesus appearing in the locked room, Thomas wasn't there. The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. So it's happening again. He's appearing before them, but this time Thomas is there. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. He realized who he was and he's like expressing things really um, with, with a lot of energy. My Lord and my God. He's surprised. Maybe he's relieved. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So I love this passage because Thomas was thinking these things and he shared them with the disciples maybe. Um, he shared them with the disciples right before Jesus showed up, uh, saying that I want to see Jesus and touch his wounds. See where his the nails were in his hands and the spear pierced his side. He wanted to see those things and touch them. He didn't really share that with Jesus. He didn't pray to God and say, I want to do this. I want to see this. 
help me believe. He really didn't talk to God, but Jesus showed up and answered his prayer, which shows that he's always listening. Even if we're not brave enough to ask our own questions, Jesus appears and answers them. But Thomas got to touch these things and see them and have that blessing of those answered questions. And um, just so that you can have a better idea of, of what this looked like, I'm going to show you a painting right now um, of someone many years ago in the 1700s named Caravaggio. He was a really famous Italian painter in Europe. He has this beautiful painting he did of this scene. Thomas is peeking and looking and pointing into Jesus's body and he's all of a sudden believing. So I'm gonna show you that picture. So friends, as we finish up, I did just, I don't have a wonder question for you elementary friends. This is something we don't typically do in our classroom. But I did just want to ask you the question of if you if you were at the tomb in the graveyard, what do you think your reaction would be? We read a lot of different perspectives. We heard from different characters in the story and we heard their reactions. I wonder what you think your reaction would have been. If you have a journal at home or if you have a prayer, uh, a space to write prayers for your home or for yourself, I encourage you to answer your question on paper, maybe make a drawing, but really think about what do you think your reaction would be when Jesus was raised? Would you believe him? Would you be afraid? Would you be excited? Would you have questions? All of those answers are okay because we're human and we don't know everything. Sometimes it's really hard to trust and believe in things. Jesus loved each person in the story the same amount. He does not love Thomas less. He does not love us any less when we have questions or doubts, but he does want us to go to him and ask them and be honest so that we can still stay in relationship and be close with God, be close with our Savior and talking to them. So I hope you have a great week. Enjoy these activities. Enjoy writing, enjoy making your telephone, um, and be safe with your family. Bye, friends.